What's up everybody? I'm Jeremy from Weld Tech Designs and today we are hanging out in our new garage studio where I'm going to be talking about all kinds of fun content and trying to teach you guys and also teach myself something new. Today's video is going to be all about your rear end. So are you ready? No, 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 wait a second, guys. I'm not talking about that rear end. I'm actually talking about the rear end in your van, motorhome, Jeep, the differential, you know, like, and I guess technically if you have four wheel drive, you could have a differential in the front as well. So these are all carriers that you're gonna have in your differential front or rear. And we're gonna be talking about everything from an open differential to a locking differential in this video, breaking down why you might want one or the other. So this is gonna be fun. You're gonna to wanna to hang out, maybe grab a notepad and uh, grab a drink. We're gonna have some fun here in the garage. Let's get jump into this. All right guys, so we are in carrier number one and this is gonna be an open differential. This is gonna be the differential that comes in the majority of passenger cars and even vans. This is going to make it so just one wheel is constantly spinning on your vehicle and that is it. So when you're going around corners, you know, both tires will never turn. And if you're going off-roading, it's gonna be what some people will also consider just a one-legger. That's gonna be it. It's going to have some gears here on the inside, but nothing very complex, especially when we're gonna get into these next uh, carrier rear ends. So let's jump into those because I'm bored with this one. All right, guys, so we are on our carrier number two. Now, this carrier is going to be a limited slip carrier. Now, in the Chevy Express vans and even in some of the Ford vans, you will have limited slips come from the factory. And of course, that's really nice. So now what a limited slip does is it's going to have clutches in the top of it here that are going to engage both sides of your side gears between the two spider gears. What's going to be nice about this is that both of your tires will be turning at the same time while going straight. However, when you make a turn, the clutches will disengage and allow it for, or they will engage actually, and allow it to go around a corner, not having your wheels. You'll hear it sometimes if you have a locker locked up, it makes like a chirping noise going around a corner. This is gonna allow your turn um, to move freely and not have really crazy tire wear as well. So this is number two. This is a limited slip. All right guys, so here we are. This is the, going to be carrier number three. And what this is called is a Detroit locker. Now this is a legendary locker and a lot of people run this in their vehicles because there's very little maintenance and very little things that can go wrong with it. And that's always a plus. So what this is going to have is this is going to have a giant spring in there. And what it does is as long as you hit your foot's on the gas, the spring is going to expand and make both wheels spin. As you go around that corner, you let off the gas, the spring is gonna is going to retract and allow that outside wheel to split, spin at a higher revolution than the inside wheel. Now that's great. Now when you're off-roading, that's totally different and you may be on the gas as you go around that corner, keeping both of those wheels completely locked and that's always going to be a plus. Having a good old time driving in the dirt. Takeaway from this is if you're on the gas, it's locked up. This is number three. All right guys, so here it is. This is gonna be number four. And this locker looks really cute because it's not for a van. This is actually for a Jeep. And I had to borrow this because I don't use this type of locker in many of the builds that we do. What locker might I be talking about is this is an e-locker or an electric locker as well. What it does is this does have electrical leads that go to it and it's going to be engaged only when you want it to be engaged and that is what people love about this e-locker. It's going to have less moving components or parts that could go bad, like these seals in it in an air locker. What it's going to do though, is it's gonna give you power to both wheels when you want it, and that's it. You turn it on, you turn it off. Simple as could be. That's why it's really neat. 
Mm, I think I have something that I would prefer to run over this, and I'm gonna show you that locker next. All right, guys, so this is gonna be number five. And I am gonna say that this is probably my choice of you know, carriers that I'm gonna run in my vans. I have this in my Chevy Express van. And what I'm talking about here is an ARB air locker. And what's really nice about this is that I'm going to have air on there. Air is also great for filling up tires. Well, that air unit is going to supply air to the locker, engaging the clutches in there, allowing for both wheels to spin only when I press the button to do so. So again, similar to the e-locker, it's only engaged when I want it, and that's going to be the plus in this air locker. Now I will tell you there's also, I wanna be fair, there is something negative about it, is it does have these seals in it, and the seals over time can go bad. So that is something to think about when choosing an air locker. Now I will tell you what is great about this is if you have that Ford van, that semi-float, Dana 60, C-clip, 35 spline axles, this is the locker that you're gonna have to run. All right guys, so there it is, five different carriers that you may find or want to put in your van. And these are all great options, um, some better than others, and some you know may not even fit your application, but at least I hopefully haven't confused you more than I've confused myself. Now, you may be asking is, well, that's great and all, but where do these things even go? What do you mean? I need to know more. So for that, we're gonna head out into the shop and we're gonna show you where you might find one of these carriers in your vehicle. All right guys, so you saw all those carriers on the bench and that is great, but now you wanna know is where are they on my vehicle? Well, as we come underneath the back of this van, you're gonna see this giant rear end, this axle underneath the back of the van. You can see both tires are still connected on here. And this does have a cool WeldTech Designs five inch lift kit on it. And that's really nice. Well, your carrier is located inside the center section of your rear end and that is great. You also have ring and pinion gears in there as well, but we're gonna talk gears in another video. There's where it's located. Let's check out this four wheel drive van that we got right over here. All right guys, so we are under another van and now this is different. This is a four wheel drive van, but now you may notice that this whole rear end is the same and because when we do our four wheel drive conversions on these vans, we don't have to change out the rear ends and that is great. However, what we will do is we will go back inside these. We will add the carrier that you're going to want, you know, for your conversion, as well as changing that gear ratio we talked about. This one, I think we're gonna to go to like a 410 gear ratio. That may be craziness. That's in a video coming up. I'm not done with this. We got one more to go check out. All right, guys, so here it is. This is gonna be the last place that you're going to find a carrier bearing. And as we jump to the front of this Chevy Express van, you're gonna see that we have put our coil over conversion four by four in this. And what's great about using WeldTech Designs to do your four wheel drive conversion is we give you the options to put a locking carrier in the front of this, as well as if you want to run different gears otherwise, that is great. And like I said, we're gonna do a whole nother video just talking about gears. So there it is. These are all of the carriers that you can put in your van. That's all I got, that's it. All right guys, so that's it for this video. And this is the first video in our new garage studio. It was a ton of fun and we look forward to bringing you more content in here, breaking down different components that you might want to run in your van. Um, and if you found any of this informative, please make sure you comment below, tell us what you love. And hey, if I messed up on any part of describing one of these carriers, comment down below as well, because I would love to learn new things. And that's what this is all about. Kind of like over at Jeremy's World 10, where we're talking about all kinds of other stuff. I mean, anyways, guys, but anyways, I'm Jeremy from Weld Tech Designs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Smash that subscribe button and give it a big thumbs up. I will see you in the next video.